Great. Good morning, Senator Blunt. Good morning, McGraw. How are you this morning? We're doing good. Thanks Hi, for thanks for not Kelly says hi too, by the way. Um, oh, good. Kelly, how are you? I'm fine. How are you? <laughs> uh, lots of lots going on. First, uh, the Intelligence Committee, your colleagues in the Senate yesterday held a news conference to say that Russia, uh, we, they don't know what they did before, but they did sort of ring a bell saying that going forward, expect them to try and influence the midterms and the next presidential election. And it doesn't seem like a lot of people took that to heart. That seems like a pretty big story that's not getting enough attention. Well, if it's a big story, you know, we should wonder why it's a big story. The Russians have involved themselves in elections all over Europe for 15 years now or so. Uh, purportedly even had, uh, had a plot that included... Uh, assassinating the uh, the president of Montenegro when they were trying to vote to get into NATO, which they successfully did, uh, you know, interfering in Estonia, interfering in Poland, interfering in Germany a month ago or a couple of weeks ago uh, in France. So I don't know why we're surprised by this, but uh, we do need to look at ways to maybe maybe better identify and more fully disclose what's happening here, but in a society where people can basically say anything they want to say, uh, the Russians saying it is hard to narrow down to how you always prevent that from happening. But the Russians have been bad actors under Putin. I think we have to expect them to continue to be. Uh, and the thing I'm most uh, concerned about, frankly, as a former uh, Secretary of State of Missouri, is being sure that we have secured the voting system itself. Uh, the registration system, more open, a lot of people can get to those records. There are provisional ballot ways to defend that if it happens, but we need to be absolutely sure that the Russians or some guy in, in his basement can't get into the vote counting system without us knowing that happened. I think that's probably where our greatest focus uh, should be, but also to put people on alert uh, that the Russians are doing here what they're doing all over Europe, and we should be wary of that. Do you think, uh, what's the responsibility of the big tech companies, Google, Twitter, Facebook, do they have some responsibility to ferret out some of these fake ads by Russian operatives? Well, I don't know. You know, I, I think that radio and television networks have run ads that weren't true in campaigns I've been involved in, and they weren't, they weren't the ads we put on the air. They were the ads that, that we thought we, we could totally disprove, but they continued to run. So I, I don't know how you really deal with that. Uh, I don't know how much money $100,000 buys on Facebook. That doesn't buy much on your radio station over the course of a year, but it, it might buy a lot on Facebook. And uh, uh, I, I think we have to really think through this so that we know what we're doing, we react in the right way, uh, but we don't do things that make it impossible for uh, Americans, uh, American citizens, to say what they have a right to say, whether it's true, frankly, or not. Uh, I do want it on the record that we are regulated by the federal government that we must play all political ads. We are not allowed to pick and choose which ones we are allowed to play. Exactly. So the point would be, do you think that should apply to Facebook and Twitter and uh, equally, that they must run all political ads? Uh, uh, that's that's exactly the point I was trying to make, and thanks for making it even better than I did. <laughs> but, but in the ads, though, you do have to say paid for by so-and-so or I'm Roy Blunt, I approve this ad. Uh, we're not allowed to take foreign money, from what I understand. So there are some regulations that sort of stops foreign entities from buying ads on local media. Um, yes, that, I think that's true, though that doesn't stop people from watching Russian TV that's available, RTV, in a lot of places in the country. I, I, I think this is an important issue. We just need to be sure when we solve it, we're not uh, making decisions that have much broader thought, much broader impact than we think they do. Nobody wants the Russians interfering in our elections. Nobody wants uh, Putin to continue his thuggish behavior uh, here or in the in in the countries of our allies next to him and we need to figure out the best way to put a stop to that and i suppose the best way initially is be very alert to what you hear 
because it may or may not be uh, what it sounds like it is. Uh, let's move on to uh, Las Vegas. There's a story in the New York Times this morning that says that uh, Democrats and Republicans might find some common ground banning this this bump stock. Um, uh, 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 what are your thoughts as you read that? And, and do you think the Democrats can and Republicans can come together on something like that? Well, you know, it's already against the law to, to have a full, uh, a, a fully automatic uh, weapon, assault weapon, uh, that is truly an assault weapon. It doesn't just look like uh, a weapon that might be an assault weapon. Uh, I would think that modifying a weapon to reach the fully automatic standard uh, is against the law, and this may be right on the edge of what the law is, uh, the way the law is written, but... Uh, you know, we ought to be sure we're enforcing the laws we have. We need to be continue to be sure that we're looking at mental health like all other health uh, and not quickly rush to conclusions here that somehow uh, these these issues always become uh, gun issues on, uh, on the side of people that want to minimize uh, Second Amendment rights. I want to move on to tax cuts and tax reforms. There's a lot of people talking about closing loopholes and deductions. And one of the ones that's probably most controversial, Senator Blunt, is the local and taxes, the state and local taxes no longer being tax deductible. And not to get into the weeds, but when somebody pays local or state taxes, that's then deducted from the taxes they then pay to the federal government. They're thinking about closing that loophole so you pay taxes on the taxes you pay locally. What are your thoughts on that? Well, my, my thought is we really need uh, to restructure the tax structure where people that work hard for a living take more of their paycheck home than they're taking home now, and that we need to do things that, on the other end of the tax code, that see that people have uh, have a better jobs because we're more competitive. And it's all. I also think it's important we get this done this year, McGraw and Kelly. And my view is if that's a fight you can't win this year. You need to back up and say, okay, we're going to have to build a greater consensus around that. The point is that in relatively low tax states like ours, uh, our federal tax dollars subsidize a lot of spending in high tax states like California and New York, where um, they get the credit for all the money they spend in their state. Uh, and then we make up for that with, with federal money that uh, – Missourians pay and don't have quite the same benefit. But as you pointed out, that's a that's a popular deduction. It sounds unfair to people that they're paying taxes on money that they never got. Uh, your state income tax, as an example, you never get to take that that money home. But your property tax, you get to take home, but then you write that to another taxing entity. I think it's a big debate, and and my view really is that if we can't win some of these fights in the next 75 days on tax reform, people still need a tax cut, and there, there are ways to do that by distributing the tax burden a little differently. The other thing, too, is people are afraid the uh, real estate agency, the realtors, a uh, very powerful lobby in Washington, Home, homeowners, probably the biggest uh, uh, expense, the biggest uh, investment people make. There's a worry that the deductions, the standard deductions will be so big that it will disincentivize people to buy homes because you won't be able to write off the mortgage interests. What are you hearing about that? Well, I do hear about that. I hear about that from charities as well. Probably the second biggest deduction that uh, families take advantage of is the charitable deduction, and uh, you know, the, the people that raise money for church and charity have some of those same concerns. Uh, but we have, over time, always increased the standard deduction as uh, cost goes up and inflation goes up, and we haven't done that in a while. Uh, and uh, I, I, I would uh, imagine that we will have some increase in the standard deduction. Uh, but the mortgage interest for people who itemize will still be there as a deduction, uh, as will uh, the charity, the charitable giving for people who who uh, itemize and give money to charities. Uh, so I, I I think that's likely to be in the final product. You'll have a bigger um, 
individual um, standard deduction if you don't itemize, but you'll still have uh, those two uh, tax deductions available if you do itemize your taxes. And Of course, you just explained the argument. People think, well, more people will choose just to take the standard deduction so they no longer have the same incentive to give money to their church or local charities, and I would hope that people continue to be motivated to do that for other reasons besides just the tax code. So I, I think the tax code makes a difference how uh, when you're raising money for charities. How confident are you in the next 75 days you can get across the finish line with tum, some type of tax cut? What I keep telling my colleagues is if we get a tax cut this year, we can come back in 2019 and look at, at more detail of the cleaning up the tax code that doesn't happen this year. But my concern would be if we don't get a tax cut this year, that we're likely not to get one during the four years of, uh, uh, of this administration. And uh, as quickly you get into the, uh, the congressional elections next year and then the presidential election discussion starts soon after that, uh, and uh, we need to get a tax cut and get it this year. People need to have, uh, for, for all, a, almost a decade now, have found themselves in a slower-than-average economy with slower-than-average wage increases, uh, need to have a sense that they are they can do more for their family uh, than, they're, than they've been able to do in the last eight or nine years. Senator Blunt, we'll leave it there. Safe travels. You're always welcome here. Have a good day. Thanks. See you, 